If you've been using Adobe InDesign for a little while, we need to know how to bring in a file from Microsoft Word into Adobe InDesign without losing any of the formatting. Hello, this is Raphael Freeman from Renana Typesetting, and in this video, we're going to see how to do that properly. Now, here's some text that we've already brought in, and I'm going to just home in onto one paragraph, um, which is in French. And if you look, we can see that there is text in bold. It's been come in. Um, it's in Arno Pro bold. We can see that in the character if you've got very good eyesight. Uh, and we've got Egyptians. That's in regular. Um, and we've got bold again. And we've got this in regular. Um, so great. Everything worked. Uh, if we go to the first page, uh, let's go to the first page. Uh, we've got text here. The stuff in italic. See Arno italic. Everything is great. Now, in this particular job, this is actually something that really happened. A client came back and said, I want to know if I could solve this problem for them. And I said, to, they said, well, um, this is wrong. So I said, what do you mean it's wrong? I said, well, this text shouldn't be in regular. I said, well, yes, it should. It says so regular here. Look, regular. They said, no, look at the word file. OK, so I went back to the word file. I opened it up for the client and uh, lots of italics there. Let's go down to 10, 6. And sure enough, the this had, oh, they're right. This Egyptians is supposed to be bold. It's not supposed to be uh, regular. So the import didn't work. And this import had been done uh, not using my methodology, by bringing it in and then applying the styles, the bold and the italic character styles in Adobe InDesign after import. So let's just minimize Adobe InDesign now so it's not too distracting. So the methodology we're going to use is, is very simple, is we're going to apply the character styles in Word before we bring it into Adobe InDesign. Now, what we do about paragraph styles is really for another video, um, but I would recommend applying paragraph styles in Word as well. But more importantly, in terms of retaining the bold and italics, we want to do that. So there are two methods that we can do. The first method is more, more robust and it will reveal things that we don't necessarily know in the document. Um, and the second method um, is a lot faster. So let's first start with the first method. So what we need to do is we need to go to the styles panel up here and click on this little button here, which is control out shift S. And this will bring the styles panel up. Um, I like to place it actually usually on a separate monitor, but just for this video, we'll keep it here. Now it's a good idea to keep saving and hopefully um, Word won't crash too many times. Then we're going to go to the bottom of the screen and click on Options. And in Options, we're going to click on Font Formatting. Make sure the other boxes are unclicked. Um, we're just going to keep, yeah, In Use Works, and we'll do them alphabetical. And when we do this, this is going to reveal all the formatting, all the local formatting in the entire document. So let's go to the beginning of the document and we'll see italics, right? So here's some italics and we can see here Latin italic. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new character style called IT text. It helps if you can spell. You can call it whatever you like. And I'm going to make it uh, red so I can see it. And I'm going to apply a shortcut key. There's already one being applied called F7. So it's already been applied, so I can't reapply it. F7. So now you're going to say, well, I'm going to have to now highlight each italic and make it F7. No, what we do is we find an italic and we right click and it says there's 16 of these in this formatting. We just said F7. OK. And what we can now do is we can go through the entire document and do this for bold and set for bold italic. So let's quickly do that for bold italic. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set us up for bold and bold italic. Uh, and then uh, uh, we're going to sort of like jump back. So I've quickly created a bold and bold italic. So now I can... And I give them a shortcut key of F8 and F9. So I can now click now on my italic text 
uh, select 26 and hit F7 and click any go through my list of different um, uh, different local formatting on the right thing and I can go through it systematically okay um, so let's go and find bold italic select one and we're going to make that F9 um, here I'm going to find bold 503 of those I'm glad we're not doing those one by one and hit F8 okay so let me just go and do that for the whole document for you whilst you can have a cup of coffee okay so I um, hope you enjoyed your cup of coffee um, and as we can see on the right things are much much cleaner uh, but if we look into the footnotes over here these are in italics and it hasn't worked so this methodology of using the styles panel to reveal the formatting works in the main text but it does not work in the footnotes so what we're going to do here we're going to we're going to cheat we're just going to bring up the find and replace and we're going to do a search for italic text um, and this is not super robust and doesn't Sometimes you have to be a bit careful with doing this, but for this particular document, you'll understand what I'm trying to do. We'll see that it works. And we're just going to do replace all 89 of them. And we now have a document that is ready to bring into Adobe InDesign. But before we go and jump into Adobe InDesign, I wanted to show you one of the major advantages of the system. Now, it's not super fast. You know, you drank a cup of coffee whilst I was doing this. And if this had been a very large file, this can take an hour or two. It could be about five, six minutes. The reason why this system is very good is because if we look here, we've left one thing here, all caps. And if I go and select this, we will see that the client, rather than making this a capital D, they actually applied the formatting of all caps. Let's go into the font format over here. Notice it says all caps. If I take all caps off, the D turns into a lowercase d. So by using this method, we can find weird things like this. Okay, now we could simply, another way of getting rid of them, of course then we wouldn't know if it was full caps or not. We could do control space but doing control space or getting rid of local formatting now will change the text. It's now gone to lowercase rather than uppercase. So control space is great, but here it would be rather bad. Here we have to actually manually fix it. So we take the M, control space, type a capital M, go to the P, control space, make it lowercase and type a capital P. And let's find those other ones as well. Now we might want to do something a bit cleverer, um, but just, just for the purpose of demonstrating this, I think this does the trick. So shift P. So now we've got a file that is clean um, and we've left the superscript in uh, because that's going to be the footnotes by and large. Okay, so let's do a save. We have to actually close Microsoft Word um, because of the file in Microsoft Word before importing it. So now we're going to go back into Adobe InDesign and we're going to now place the file. That's what I did before. And we're going to take the latest version and I'm actually going to so show, show import um, options. And I've created a special YouTube uh, import option um, just, just for the purpose here. And what I did was I, I mapped uh, normal to O body so that this will work in footnote text to footnote so that it'll come in uh, more nicely for the purpose of the demonstration of what we're trying to, to do here. So now we've brought all the text in. Uh, the colors remain the same because we had that before. Um, and uh, what we now need to do is we now need to override the styles. What do I mean by that? Well, there. if we look over here, we see a BD plus, and over here we see an O body plus. So we can just select all the text and we can do clear overrides, okay? Um, and then if we want to do the same thing for the footnotes, um, we have to first make sure that footnotes are defined correctly. So let's just see how footnotes are defined in, in this. Okay, so we're going to, um, but we'll just leave this, this, this we'll leave the uh, footnote references as they are, but we'll just make this be uh, O footnotes. Okay, we're not going to worry too much about it because just, it's just to demonstrate what it's supposed to look like. And in order to reset the footnotes, so we don't have all this, these overrides, I'm afraid we have to do, it's rather annoying, we have to go into find format. Okay, and choose O footnotes. 
and change format. O oh, footnotes, and we we'll just start for documents. Okay, so now the footnotes look a, 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 a tad better. Okay, but now let's see if our method actually worked. We're going to 10.6, and just to remind you, these were the words that were before in Roman. Okay, so that sums up method number one for, for applying the styles in, in Word. And just to remind you, the advantage of this system is that it will allow us to reveal weird and wonderful stuff that might be happening in, in Adobe InDesign, uh, in, in, in the Word file, sorry. So now let's, let's now go back and see if there's a better way of doing this. So, well, or a different way of doing it. I'm not entirely sure it's better. So there is another way of doing this, and that is a macro that I found uh, uh, not actually that long ago, a few months ago, even though it's been around f for years. Um, and I'll show you the macro. And if you're familiar with macros, it's great. So here are all my macros. And there's a macro called apply style. And there's a macro called make style. Okay. Uh, and if we edit these macros, just have a look at them. They don't really mean too much to me, but that's the macro. But you actually just copy and paste this and then it works. Okay. So the, the, the method that we can do is we can say, well, I made a shortcut key, but let's let's do it the slow way so you can actually see how things work. So I choose make style and I choose run. And what it's now going to do is going to create a whole list of character styles, B, D, I, T, text, etc., etc., within the document. Now, in order to see that, I have to go into options and I have to say not selected styles in use, but actually in current documents. OK, and then I'll see a whole bunch of character styles that it creates and it and it handles uh, bold, bold, italic, unders, underscore, small cap, strike through, double strike through and, and every comp, every permutation that you can think of, superscript, superscript subscripts, etc. We're going to run it. And I've, again, I've, I signed a shortcut key, um, but I'm just going to show it to you. It's an apply styles and run. And now it's going to go through all the text in the main story and that just just to remind you whilst it's doing this that words main text and footnotes are separate which is why we can't see the reveal formatting in the footnotes so now wow that's very clean now so if we now go into bold we see it's a character style so it'll aid there called bold right and we can highlight that more easily if we want by just making it a different color. Sorry, let's make, let's make the bold. I think we did green before, didn't we? I can't remember. Okay, uh, and we can make the italics. Let's assign a color to the italics. Um, but the footnotes haven't been done. We have to run again the macro apply styles um, whilst the text cursor is in the footnotes. Okay, otherwise it won't work. OK, and now it's done the italics. So that's it. That's all we have to do. Now, the advantage of this, that was super fast. I mean, we just did that in like two minutes. The disadvantage, though, which I think is actually quite a big problem, is that we're not going to reveal that text at the beginning um, that used the all caps. OK, I don't remember where that, that happened. So we're not going to see weird things in our file. Uh, also, we might have in a file, might, for example, a text there might be text in bold that we might want to set as small caps or text, etc. So that is a problem. But there is another problem, which I think is kind of more fundamental uh, with this. Again, not the biggest problem in the world, but just you should be aware of. So let's pretend that this was a heading. It kind of is a heading. Um, and let's say the client made it a heading by doing bold italic. And, and let's say they want this word to be in italic. So this is a head now. Just make that into a head. So if I now apply the styles, what's going to happen, because the client originally set this in bold and then made that bold italic, then it's going to apply a character style called bold and the character style bold italic in this text. So that means that, well, we're going to see what, what that means when we bring into Adobe InDesign. So let's now uh, save this text. And we're going to replace the text now. But I hope I've got the right one. Uh, we're going to use our special import. I'm going to choose uh, YouTube. Um, 
YouTube import filter and bring it in. And as you can see straight away, you're going to see that, hopefully you're going to see that. So let's now go to 10.6 just to show you that this problem is, is solved. Uh, we're going to override all, all the, um, going to override everything. So I've got a shortcut that does all of that and takes care of the footnotes, etc. So let's do all of that. And well, I guess I didn't do it that well because it didn't work. There we go. Okay, so this, let's say now we wanted to create a header called head one. Now, if the head one is really supposed to be this, okay, it's not supposed to be uh, bold and it's not supposed to be bold italic. So now we're going to have to go in and we can do this with a search and replace, but we have to be aware we have to get rid of that bold. We have to change that to italic. And we have to change that to 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 none, um, so that's just something to be aware of. That if you're going to have heads and chapter titles, etc., uh, then this method will not work. This this much faster method of running this macro uh, will not be uh, robust uh, in that return, and you won't know about weird and wonderful formatting. So just to sum up, the the absolute correct way. So we because. At the moment we lose text, the best method, the only the only method that I know of, and if anyone has a better method, they should let me know, is to um, apply character styles uh, within Microsoft Word, either by using the reveal formatting methodology, which I like very much, or by running this macro. If anybody wants that macro, then just drop a comment. It's actually best to email me. Um, and if you subscribe and, and like my video as well, then I would appreciate that of course um, even more um, and you have to be familiar with macros you have to understand how to copy and paste them in um, so as I say you have to be able to do this and take this text and do copy and paste then you can do it so there you go I um, hope you've enjoyed this video until the next one if you've enjoyed this video then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did not I'm not quite sure why you waited all the way to the end of the video to get to this point. So assuming that you have, then I'm glad you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to find out about more videos when they come up, then I would suggest subscribing to this channel. If you have a manuscript that needs typesetting or you just have a general question about the video, you can leave it in the comments below or you can go over to our website and see what other services we also provide. Until the next time, this was Raphael Freeman from Running Our Typesetting.